time. I want to thank God for grace. I want to thank God for each and every one of us for our God is such an awesome God. Praise the Lord, somebody. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It's good again this morning that you are standing on your feet. I want to thank God for you. I celebrate you this morning. Thank God for your life. Thank God for your life. Aren't you happy that you are alive? Aren't you happy that you are well? Aren't you happy that God was able to wake you up again this morning? We should be celebrating this because it's another day. So let us lift up our voice before we do anything at all this morning. From Monday to Friday, oh my God, how much can we pay for it? Let's just lift up our voice. Let's just worship God this morning. Let's celebrate our King this morning. Let's give him praise. 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 Let's give him worship. Let's acknowledge him as God. Let's acknowledge him as King. Let us worship God this morning before we do anything. Let us worship God. If not for anything, you are alive from Monday to Friday. God kept you. Oh my God. We need to praise God. We need to appreciate him. We need to acknowledge his goodness, his mercy, his loving kindness, his faithfulness over our life. So wherever you are carrying me this morning, just go ahead and just begin to exalt the name of the Lord. Thank God for your life. Thank God for your children. Thank God for the breath of God in your life. Thank God again for the house that you live. Thank God. Thank God. Let's thank God this morning. I just feel like appreciating my God this morning. So let's go ahead. Let's go. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. I want you to go ahead. Just begin to thank him for things that he has done, for things that he has not done. I want us to lift up our voice again this morning. I want us to thank God. I want you to thank God. Help me thank God. Okay, if there's nothing for you to thank God, I want you to help me thank God. I want you to help me thank God. Help me appreciate God for my life. Yes, if there's nothing for you to thank God for, everybody join me this morning. Thank God for my life. Thank God for my family. I want you to just go ahead and thank God this morning. Let's appreciate God this morning. Let's appreciate God this morning. There are reasons for us to thank God. There are reasons for us to appreciate God. But there are reasons, many reasons, so many reasons to worship, to exalt, to glorify, to magnify. There are many reasons this morning just to appreciate him, just to talk about few. There's many reasons for you to thank God again this morning. So somebody go ahead. Let's thank him. We have about three more minutes for that. I just want us to show our appreciation to him this morning. Don't be tired of being thankful. Do you know that? Don't be tired of being thankful. So this morning, I want you to just thank God. I want you to thank God. I want you to thank God. I want you to thank God that you slept in your bed you didn't go to the hospital and there will not be reason for you to be in the hospital. I want you to thank God this morning. I want us to go ahead. Uh -huh. We are starting with just appreciation this morning. I want, you, I want you to appreciate God. I want you to appreciate God. If God in any way has been so good to you, I just want you to appreciate God. I want you to appreciate God. I want you to appreciate God. I have two more minutes. I have two more minutes this morning to appreciate God. I want you to go, oh, go ahead, somebody. Help me appreciate God. Immortal, invisible, all-knowing, all-glorious, all-gracious God, almighty God. Yes, 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 yes. The pillar behind my life. I give you praise this morning. The excellent God, the one that rides in the winds of the wind. I worship you this morning. I bow before you. I bow before your throne. My maker, my deliverer, my restorer the forgiver of sin, my savior, my redeemer. I want somebody to appreciate God this morning. Let's just go ahead and appreciate God. It looks as if it's still Monday. We just started this week. We are Friday already. Somebody go ahead and help me appreciate God. Who can be compared with you? Among every other God, there is none like you. Yes, the king, yes, the king of all kings. I exalt you this morning. You, the king of all kings. You, the king that every other king bowed before his throne, bowed before his aha, bowed before his presence. I worship you this morning. Somebody help me. We have one more minute. Somebody help me this morning. Let's worship him. Let's worship him. The healer, the deliverer, the restorer. I give you praise this morning. The ancient of all days, my shield, my shepherd, my buckler. I worship you. The one that spreads the heavens like a canopy. Hallelujah. I bow my knees before you this morning. 
I worship my king, the lover of my soul, the restorer of my life, my great redeemer. Yes, yes, I want you to go ahead. My shepherd, my husband, my best friend, my father, aha, my master, my healer. I want you to go ahead. I just appreciate him for me this morning. Let's appreciate him this morning. We cannot appreciate him enough. To you, oh God, oh, to you, our father, be the glory again this morning. To you, to you, a God, to you, our God, I worship you. I worship you. The chief commander of my armed forces, I give you all the praise. The one that is before me, the one that is behind me, the one that is in my right, the one that is in my left, be thou exalted again this morning. I bow my heart before you, my king. I bow my heart before you, my savior. I bow my heart before you, my redeemer. I bow my heart before you, O God, excellent God. May your name be praised. May your name be glorified. May your name be magnified for your goodness again this morning and your mercy. That through your mercy, we are able to stand up again this morning. Through your mercy, we are able, O God, to do whatever we want to do. We give you all the praise, O God. We give you all the worship, O God. And Daddy, we can never thank you enough. We return the glory, honor, and adoration to you. We appreciate you for the food that we eat, for the water that we drink, for we've been able to move from one place to another, for our eyes that we are able to see, for our ears that we are able to hear, for the bones of our body. Oh Lord, for our spinal cord, we give you all the praise. We are standing. We are not bending. We give you all the glory. We give you all adoration. Take the glory again this morning. Take the honor again this morning. And all the people of God will say, hallelujah. Thank you again for joining in the presence. I want you to please spread this news to your friends, to your family, to subscribe to our social platform. And always like and share this program. There are people that need to hear this program. Remember in the beginning of this week, one of the things that we prayed about, the laborers are few and we need to pray that the Lord of harvest will send laborers into the kingdom of God. And remember, you are one of the laborers to spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you need to do that on a daily basis. You don't have to keep it to yourself. There is somebody that desperately needs prayer and they don't know where to go. And you can also introduce them to this platform. And I believe as you do that, the Lord will bless you. Also remind them to switch on their notification so that they can come in without you. So they are not waiting for you until you come up and you are linking with them or they are linking with you. And some of us, we need not to be selfish. We have to link them on our own platform again to watch us, to watch this program alone. No, let them stand on their own. And as we do, the Lord will bless us. Hallelujah. How are we doing this morning? I am in his presence. I walk in his presence. I am surrounded by his presence. How are we doing this morning? I walk in his presence. I am, I am in his presence. I walk in his presence. I am surrounded by his presence. Let's go one more time. How are we doing this morning? I am in his presence. I walk in his presence. I am surrounded by his presence. I pray that the grace and the mercy of God go through this weekend with us. Be with us in the name of Jesus. Uphold our hands that there will not be emergency, there will not be any trouble or evil in the name of Jesus. As we open this platform again this morning, Papa, have your way. What we cannot do by ourselves, that you will do for us. And things that we can also do, that you will help us, that we will do it and we will not miss it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. A big thank you again to our media, our super media team. We love and we appreciate your good work. God bless you. To our worship team, we say God richly bless you for the good work that you do every day. To our dear sister, I love you and the Lord bless you. The Lord endow you with more grace and wisdom for the good work that you are doing. Everybody, let's appreciate them this morning for the good work that they do. The sister that help us to interpret into another language so that the message can go far and wide. Nations of the world, praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We have another darling sister this morning. They are all marching forward. It's the month of March. It's Sister Gloria Eckett. It's her birthday this morning. Another daughter of Zion helped me to join this morning to celebrate this woman of God. It's her birthday. It's her birthday. 
Let's celebrate her. Let's appreciate her. Let's thank God for her life, for another opportunity that God has given to her to see another day. If it's your birthday, always let us know. Even if you are not a member of Grace to Grace, but you're a member of this platform, we will always celebrate you. You can send your, uh, your date of birth to us, and we will always remember your date of birth to celebrate with you. And the Lord richly bless you. Once you're a member of this platform, please give us a hint. On your birthday, we will pray for you. So we pray for Sister Eke this morning that the grace and mercy of God be with her in this new month. That she go forward, nothing will be able to pull her back. Our, all our, our desires be granted in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of the Lord. Let's go again to the word of God quickly this morning. I, uh, for, for the past four days, I've been talking on our mind and I've explained in depth what your mind is. So you don't confuse it with the organs of your body. I believe we have made myself so clear that we know what our mind is. That is not the organs of our body. We're talking about our soul. Anytime they refer to your mind, they are talking about your soul. And remember, your soul, you have your will, you have your emotion, and you have your mind in your soul. Also remember, you are a spirit, uh -huh, and you have soul, and you live in a body. Can I go back again to that? You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in body. And remember, when you gave your life to Christ, one of the things that was connected back is not that you went back into your mother's womb and your mother had to give back to you again. Like the question that Nicodemus was asking Jesus in the book of uh, John 3, that's not it. What it means to be born again, it means the spirit of God that was cut off in the beginning, in the garden, now is reconnected back. And I use an illustration. It's like the light was switched off in the light of, in the heart or the heart of unbeliever. The light is switched off. But when you gave your life to Christ, what was reconnected back was your spirit. So the light was turned on. The light of God in you is turned on for you to be able to know the way for you to be able to experience some things in the kingdom of God. I believe with those explanations, we now understand. And Paul the Apostle was saying in the book of Romans 12, 1 to 2, he said, I beseech you by the mercies of God that our mind be transformed and our body be given as a living sacrifice to God. That is the book of Romans 12 and it's from verse 1 to 2. So this shows the importance of our mind. And I've said, that if your mind is not renewed, it limits your going forward in Christ. And I say for our mind to be renewed, it has to be in line with the word of God. We have to act according to the word of God. You don't just hear the word of God and do nothing about the word. Every word that we are hearing, you must adhere, you must comply. You must also take it and make sure you are acting on it. Then things will begin to change in your life. So this morning, I'm going to be looking at guiding your mind. As we round up this morning again for this weekend, what did I say? Guide your mind. Hallelujah. Aha. Let's say, for example, you have a thought that pop up in your heart because in your mind, I can use it interchangeably so we understand that as well. A thought just pop up in your mind. It just pop up. And um, as this thought pops up in your mind, it's not something that you want. It's not something that you like. What do you do as a child of God? You remember I'm saying, I'm talking about guiding your mind. One of the things that you do is for you to change it. And how do you change it? You flip it over. Take, for example, if it's a television channel that you are watching and something inappropriate comes up on the telly and you look at it, instead of you sitting there and watching it for hours, and letting that thing engross your mind, be out your heart, because you have seen it. And as you are moving from it, you are going to be thinking according to what you have seen. What do you do? Anything that is inappropriate that you are looking at, you switch off the channel. You switch off the channel. Anything that maybe, again, you are reading a magazine, and there's something that is inappropriate in that magazine, and the pages that you are opening, what do you do? You change it over, you flip it over because the devil at that point can use that which you have seen. It can use it to lure you 
into, into, into sin. So it's absolutely your choice. You have to make that choice, either to stay there and be walking, watching it, or to move away from it. You see, some people, they are so much, they love anything blood. They love anything all of him. They love anything war. So if you are part of those people that love anything war, and that's why, you see, when you sleep, you find out that even in your dream, you are fighting. Even in your dream, somebody is chasing you. Even in your dream, something is happening. Because that's what you want. And everything that you watch, I want to say this, it is stored in your mind. Anything that you watch is what? It is stored in your mind for you to break through, for you to break free from those patterns of thinking or things that is not right. Again, you as an individual, you have a choice of a healthy mind. What did I say? I have a choice of a healthy mind. I have to make that choice. It is not God that helped me to make that choice. It is not Holy Spirit. I must make the choice to say, hear this, either what I'm watching, I don't want to watch it again, either what I'm reading, and I know that it's not good for me, it's not healthy for me, I want to stop doing that thing. Then the Holy Spirit comes to play. The Holy Spirit there can help me because I have made that choice that I don't want to watch that thing again. But if I continuously watch it, and at the end of the day, I'm saying God is going to deliver me from it. No, 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 no. God is not going to deliver me from it. Because if we go back to the book of Romans, Paul the apostle said, I beseech you, you have to do the presentation of your body. You have to make the sacrifice. God is not the one that is going to help you to make that sacrifice. But when you make up your mind as an individual, the Holy Spirit again can help you because you have to make the decision. We are not robots. We are not robots. So the Holy Spirit is not going to help you to make certain decisions. You as an individual, I make the decision. The Holy Spirit back up. Help me in the decision that I have made so that I can do whatever that I have made up my mind to, to do. So if I'm feeding my mind on things that are just, if I'm feeding and focusing on things that is not right, hear this, I cannot break free. I, I cannot break free from evil thought. I cannot break free from evil pattern because those are the things that I watch continuously. Those are the things that I focus my mind on. So for me to break free, for me to turn things around in my life, I have to force those things that I know that these are the things that maybe that is uh, that is endangering my, my thinking. I have to uproot them and I have to do the uprooting. Then the Holy Spirit will have to be, uh, back me up because I have the choice. I'm the one that will make the choice. The Holy Spirit is not going to help me to make the choice on a daily basis. Each and every one of you that is hearing me, we have a choice to make. I have the choice to make. I have the choice to say, I want to think about the things that are true. I have a choice to say, no, I'm going to still be thinking about those things that are not true, those things that are not right. That are not right. Hear this. Uh, I must feed my mind with the truth. Every one of us, we must today make up our mind to feed our mind with truth. You see all the word of God that you are hearing, for it to begin to work for you, for things to begin to, uh, to turn around, prayers that I pray over your life, for it to, you know, to, to turn things around in your life. Your mind must also work in relationship with everything that is being declared. Your mind is the one that takes those things. Your mind is the one that absorbs it. After we have finished prayer here, your mind is the one that has to repeat those things that is said concerning you. Hallelujah. Take, for example, if you are eating and all you are eating is junk. Some people, they like to eat junk food. They eat this and eat that. So they are not healthy. They are not healthy. Their body, you see, their body is not healthy. Everything about them is not healthy. Why? Because they are not eating, eating healthy. Some people just eat anything, anything that comes their way. So they eat this, they eat that. They don't have a, 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 a nutritional plan, a balanced diet that they eat, that I need to eat a lot of veg, I need to eat a lot of fish, 
I need to eat maybe, um, I don't have to eat too much carbon hydrate. I don't have to eat too much that is fried food. I don't have to eat that. I don't have to eat this. They don't, they don't anything. Some people, they have one pattern of a regular food and that's all they eat. They keep eating the same thing, the same thing, the same thing. And if you are eating the same thing, it's not LD for you. It affects your body. It also affects the organs of your body in growing in a normal way. And because what you are here eating cannot make you stronger. What you are eating cannot make you healthy. What am I trying to say this morning? For our thinking to be right, you must have the right kind of food that is good for your spirit in order for your spirit man to grow. If you want to live a healthy life, then you must major and spend time in the word of God. You cannot be eating tongues. You cannot be thinking on tongues and you think that the word of God will work for you. No, it does not work that way. Let's quickly look at the book of Matthew 4 and I want to read from verse 4 and this is Jesus himself speaking here and I believe God will shed understanding on this word that this morning you will understand what I'm saying. He said, but he answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. This is Jesus himself that is speaking. Jesus told us, people of God, that you need more than bread for your life. What did I say? You need more than bread. You see, the same way that you have to eat healthy food for your life, for your spirit, and for your physical body to grow, to be nurtured. Yes, to be in right shape every organs of your body. You must not eat too much of one thing and not taking the other one. So also Jesus is saying here to the people of God, he said, man shall not live by bread alone. Our life cannot be total dependence on one thing alone. No, no, no. We must feed on the word of God. We must feed on the word of God. You see, the Bible is a food to your soul. I want to say that again. The Bible, the word of God, the scripture is the food to your soul. Remember, in your soul, by now you should know you have your will, you have your mind, you have your emotion. So the more you feed, you feed your soul with the word of God, the more you are able to face certain attack in life, the more you grow and you mature from the babyhood into adulthood. But without you feeding on the word of God, you cannot grow spiritually. It is, you know, it is for, it's our responsibility as individual for the manual that we have, that we are meant to feed on that manual each and every day, each and every day. We have to do what? We have to feed on the manner and on the manual that we have which is the word of God. Hallelujah. Let's look what helped David in the journey of life for him to conquer. What helped David for David to be a man of God, a man of God's own heart. One of the things that helped David is what we are going to see again in this scripture. Psalm 119 and verse 147. I rise up before dawn and I cry for help. I hope in your word. So there are three secrets there that we can see in the book of Psalm 119 and verse 147. Number one, David rose up early in the morning before dawn. The way you and I are breathing up again this morning and our heart is seeking God. And when we talk about our seeking God, David will rise up as early as 3 a.m at times 4 a.m. and all is crying for, is crying for help. I don't know what is in this day. Lord, help me. I can't go through this day. I need your help. I need your help. So his heart is filled and his total dependence is on God. His total dependence is not in his hammer. His total dependence is not in his strength. His total dependence is not in his wisdom. His total dependence is not in his mind. So when you wake up early and early in the morning, before the dawn, remember 6 a.m. is already a dawn. So he wakes before the dawn. So let's say he wakes up 4 a.m. All he does is to cry out for help. He say, I cry out for help and I hope in your word. And that is everything that is in your word. I'm trusting that those where will work for me. I'm trusting that those where will take my life to another level. This is what David said in his word. That is the psalm that we have just read. 119 and verse 147. He said, I rise up before dawn. 
and I cry out for help. Listen to me. There's no how you will get to this level in life that God will not become your helper. When you wake up in the morning and all you are saying, help, oh Lord. I don't know what is in the day. I don't know what is in the week. I don't know what is in the month. And all we are crying for, help me, Lord. How I wish I let I let get to that level. You see, as we are crying for help, this is registered in your mind. And all David does is to wake up every morning and cry out for help, and cry out for help, and cry out for help. I tell you this morning, if everything you will cry out for in the morning, Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need your help. There are people that I will meet on my way. There are things that I need to do today. There are people that I need to answer back. There are things that I need to do as a leader, as a mother, as a father. I cry out to you this morning. I need help. I need help. You see, because you are crying out for help at, before the turn of the day, everything that you need to help you for the day is already in your mind. You find that you will go according to the plan of God. You will walk according to the plan of God. And you search the word of God as well. And you use that again. There's no, uh, your spiritual life will not grow and will not mature. Somebody praise to me in the name of the Lord. Okay, let's look at Psalm 16 and verse 7 quickly again. This is the life of David that we are reading. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instruct me. Did you see that? Because David always cry out for help. He always cried out for help before the dawn of the day. So David also is sharing the testimony here. He said, I bless the Lord. He gives me counsel. He gives me counsel in the night. Also, he instructs my heart on what to do. He instructs my heart on what to do. Even in the darkest hour of the night, God begin to teach David, begin to feel the heart of David. I pray for you this morning. As many that are hearing me by the power of the blood of Jesus in your darkest time, in your night hour, the Lord will begin to fill your mind. You will know what to do. That what you need to do as a child of God is to spend time to cry out for help, not to man, but before God. To say to God, I need your help. To say to God, I need your assistance. To say to God, I need you to instruct me because I don't know what to do. I need instruction concerning that assignment. I need instruction concerning that matter. I need instruction concerning my marriage. I need instruction concerning my children. I need instruction concerning the colleagues and the team that I'm working with today. I need you to instruct me. I need you to instruct me. Lord, instruct my heart what to do in difficult situation, in difficult time. I'm praying for you that God will take you to that level. You will not run to man, but you will run to God. You will not go at the accent. People that you don't need to ask for help, but God this morning will begin to instruct your heart and you will take counsel from the almighty God from tonight, from today, in the name of Jesus. David said, before the turning of the morning, a day after day, in the darkest hour of the night, all I do is to open the scripture. All I do is to learn from God. All I do is to ask him questions. All I do is to ask him for help. All I do is to ask him for cancer. All I do is to ask him to instruct me. How, how, how I wish we get to that level where we don't allow people to instruct us, but we allow the word of God to instruct us, the word of God to lead us. Even, you know, when the, when the life of David was threatened by Saul, David always asked God, what do you want me to do? David had everything in his power to kill Saul two or three times that he was able to meet face to face with David with Saul. Do you know David would have laid his hand on, on Saul and killed Saul just like that, but he never laid his hand on Saul. Why? Because he allowed God to instruct him. That's number one. Number two, he made up his mind that I am not going to fight my battle. Vengeance is of the Lord. So he handed it over to God and he's trusting and he's believing. Even when his life was threatened, it did not take law into his life. And he just released everything. He will have been a dead man. He was a wanted man. He was a man that was wanted. And then his name, 
has been put out as a wanted man. But even when he has the opportunity to kill Saul, he didn't kill Saul. Even when he had no house, uh, any place to put his house, no palace, do you know David was still trusting God? It's my prayer this morning that the Lord take us to the place where we can totally trust him for our life. But this can only happen as we renew our mind. This can only happen as we are not eating junk, junk food. This can only happen as we stay stable under a shepherd. And as the word of God is coming, we are holding on to that word. We are trusting that word. Not today you are eating here, you are eating there, you are eating there to the point you get confused. It's my prayer for you this morning that the grace of God may come upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah, somebody. Let's go to the book of Psalm again, 119 and 95. And let's quickly see what the scripture says. When the wicked people hide to ambush and kill me, I choose to keep my mind on your decree. Did you see that? The wicked people here that David was referring to was Saul. When Saul was, when Saul was trying to kill David, David said, I choose to keep my mind on your decree. I choose to keep my mind on your word. That is the promises that you have made for me, that I'm going to be the king. The promises that you have given me, and you have anointed my head with oil, uh -huh, that I'm going to be the king. Even when the wicked was trying to kill me, when they lay ambush for me, that's the scripture. I didn't write it. You saw it there in the book of 119, Psalm 119 and 95. It said, when the wicked people hide to ambush me and kill me, I choose to keep my mind on your decree. When, that, when Saul was looking for a way to eliminate the life of David, David said, I just choose, I just choose to keep my mind on your word. I rest my case. I was not troubled. I know that the promises of God concerning my life will surely come to pass. Can I pray that for you again from this morning? Whatever you are going through, may God give you that grace. May God give you that grace to choose to keep your mind on the word of God. Can I pray for you again? Whatever you are going through, no matter how fierce the battle is, I pray for grace for you this morning that you will choose. All you will choose is just to stay on the word of God. All you will choose uh, is to keep all your eyes on the decrees of the word of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Nothing will be able to shift your attention or your focus or nothing will be able to make you to shake but your mind will be focused on the word of God. Let's look at this again. You must focus your mind on the right thing. That's another point. You must focus your mind on right thing in order for you to break free. You can't break free without focusing your mind on the right thing. Hear this again this morning. The answer you want to see, the result you want to see, the breakthrough you want to experience, the favor you want to experience, the goodness you want to experience, you must focus your mind. You must focus your mind on that very thing that you want to see in order for you to see the result. Am I talking to somebody? Because if you don't focus your mind on that which you want to see, you cannot see. And this is why you have heard it before. When somebody is believing God for something, they will ask you to go out in action. Even motivational speakers, they believe in this because they have tested it. And these are principles that are taken from the word of God. And they are using on a daily basis. And it's working from them. You can't say, I want to buy a house. And you are not looking for a house. You can't say, I want to buy a house. And you don't, at the same time, you are putting something aside. And you are working towards it. You are disciplining yourself. And you have the picture of the kind of house that you want to, uh, that you want to buy. You can't say, I want to buy a house. And it's something that you are saying in the mouth. And it does not matter with the picture that you have in your heart. You must have the picture. The picture must match up with something that you have in your mind. Again, if it's a pattern and it's a negative pattern that you want to break free from, it's the same thing. You must know what you want to break free from in your mind. And what do you do? You must all begin to say, this thing, I won't do it again. The Holy Spirit is going to strengthen my mind. The Holy Spirit is going to help my mind. You're going to focus on that which you want to be right in your life. Whatever you focus your attention to, that is what you will get back. Whatever you focus your mind on, that is what you will get. And you cannot see and you cannot get 
to where you have not seen in life. And these are things that we need to know as a child of God. Praise the Lord, somebody. You must focus your mind on things that you want to see. You must focus your mind on things that you need to change so that when your life is taking you to another direction and where you want to go is A, you must be able to stop it quickly and say, no, that is not where I'm going. This is where I want to go. And then the Holy Spirit help you because you have made the choice. Hallelujah. Again, Philippians 4 and verse 8 says, finally, my brother, sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is praiseworthy, think about such things. Hallelujah. Aha. So as a child of God, our thinking must be on anything that is true, anything that is true, anything that is true. Hallelujah. You see why you were growing up, or even now that you are an adult, there may be some things that has been spoken over your life as a passing word. Somebody can look at you and say, you, I, I even think you are beautiful. It can be your husband. It can be your wife. It can say, I even too, uh, you know, I think you are beautiful. But now I'm beginning to see that you are so ugly. You are so ugly. You don't allow that to get to you. You don't allow that to stick to you. Did you hear that? All you do as a child of God. Because that's not something that is true about you. Even if you feel that you are ugly. But you know that the power of God inside of you, outside you may look ugly, but inside of you is beautiful. So you don't think about things that are not true about your life. All what you think about, things that are noble, things that is right, things that are pure, things that are praiseworthy. So take, for example, again, somebody's trying to talk down on you. And every time they talk down on you, and that really gets to you. You know, some people, the way they talk, they are so careless in talking. They can just say some things. And that gets to you. Even as a mother at times, do you know there are some things that you say to your children that they don't like, but they can't tell you to your face because of the respect that they have for you. I'm speaking also to the younger ones. All you need to do, think about the things that are true about your life. Focus your attention on that thing that is true. Don't focus your attention on things that is not right. Don't focus your attention on any comment that is made about your life that is not right. Shout hallelujah. The third thing I'm going to leave with you this morning. Uh, don't think about any destructive thought. Anything that is destructive will imprison you. Anything that is destructive will, do what, will imprison you. Never sit down for once and think about suicide. Never think out, never, never sit, sit down for once and think about doors that you open and can take your life for a second. Never sit down for a minute and all that you entertain, you are entertaining the thought of death. You are entertaining the thought of suicide. You are entertaining the thought of failure. These are destructive thoughts. Never think of one minute of anything that is not the plans of God. Remember, once you think about it or you begin to meditate on it, the devil begins to take your life in that angle in order to destroy you. So you must get to a place that you never allow any destructive thought in order to take over your life. You must be at the top of it anytime any destructive thought comes into your mind. You must be in the position to say, no, that is not true. I cannot take my life. I can't kill myself. Even though you are believing for something, even though there are things that you need and God has not, do, uh, has, has not given it to you as at the time, that is not enough for you to open yourself for a destructive talk. So from today, you must make up your mind that you are a child of God. You can't kill yourself. You can't cut your life short. You can't destroy anything that is God. You are the temple of the Most High God. So you must not think about anything that is destructive that can harm you or harm your children or harm your loved one. So your thoughts must be pure. From today, it's my prayer that God will grant you grace that everything that you'll be thinking about will be things that are true and things that are praiseworthy. It's my prayer for you again this morning. The grace to be able to guide your mind diligently. The Lord will grant you that grace from this minute in the mighty name of Jesus. It's my prayer for you again this morning that the grace of God will envelop you in his power, in his might, in the name of Jesus. It's my prayer for you again that from today, the Lord will guide jealously every thought as you release and you make a sacrifice for your mind and your thought to be transformed in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Father God. Lord, we give you praise. Go with me to the book of Psalm 104 as we read from, from 1 to 15 again this morning for us to go and pray. Psalm 104, and I read, my soul, oh Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty, covering yourself with the light as with a garment, stretching out the heaven like a tent. It lays the beams of the chambers on the water. It makes the cloud a chariot. It rises on the wings of the wind. It makes its messenger wings. Its minister a flame of fire. It set the earth up on its foundation so that it should never be moved. You cover it with the deep as a garment. As the water stood above the mountain, as you rebuked the flea, as the sound of your thunder, they took to flight. The mountain rose and the valley shut uh, shut down uh, to the place that you appointed for them. You set a boundary that they may not pass, so that they might not again cover the air. You, you make a spring course fought in the valley. They flew between the hills. Uh, the white donkey points their chest. Uh, beside them, the boss of the heaven dwell. They sing among the branches uh, from one lofty above. Your waters, the mountain, the earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. Uh, you cause the grass to grow for the livestock, uh, the plant for man to cultivate, uh, that he may bring uh, forth food from the earth and wine of gl uh, gladden, and wine to gladden the heart of man, all to make his face shine and bread to strengthen man's heart. Glory be to God the Father, the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I want you to lift up your voice this morning, and I want you to decree and declare that, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask for Holy Spiritual will that take possession of my mind. Oh, Lord, I ask that you will take possession of my mind from today. Take possession I have take possession, and you must be willing to give it to God as well. Say, take possession of my heart from this morning. Say, Lord, take possession. Lord, say, take possession. Take possession of my mind from this morning. I submit it to you. I give it to you. Lord, take possession. Lord, take possession. Lord, take possession. Lord, take possession of my mind. I give it to you. I give it to you. Lord, take the rulership of my mind. I give it to you this morning. As you are joining me this morning, I want you to decree and declare that the Lord will take possession, that the Lord will take the possession of your heart from this morning. Go ahead and begin to ask God. I want you to also decree and declare that, Father, I ask that you will take full control of my entire being in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, take full control of my entire being. Say, take full control. Say, take full control. Say, take full control. Say, take full control of my entire being from this morning. Say, I surrender. Say, I lay it down as a sacrifice before your throne. Say, I lay it down at your altar this morning. Say, take full control. Say, take full control. I want you to go ahead and begin to speak. Say, Father, this morning, take full control of my entire being. Say, I give it to you. 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 Every part of my life, Lord, there's no one again that I'm in charge of. I want you to lift up your voice and say, I give you my life. Say, I give you my mind. Say, I give you my will. Say, I give you my emotion. Say, from today, Lord, take full control of my mind, of my emotion, of my heart. I give it to you this morning. I give it to you this morning. You've got to give it to him. 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 You know God does not take anything by force from his children. When you give it to him, then he takes charge. Say, take control of my entire being. Say, take control of my will. Say, take control of my emotion. Say, take control of my mind. Say, this morning, I submit. I surrender my soul, my mind, my spirit, my thought. Say, I give it to you this morning. As you are praying for yourself, I want you to pray for your children again. Say, Father, I give my will. I give
give my mind. I give my motion, my entire being. Lord, I give you to you this morning. Lord, I give you to you this morning. Everything about me, I submit. Everything about me, I surrender. My mind this morning, I cry out uh, that the Lord take over my mind. 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 I want you to pray that way. I want you to pray that way. I want you to pray that way. I want you to lift up your voice. And I want you to declare, in the name of Jesus, increase my spiritual sensitivity. Oh Lord, from this morning, increase my spiritual sensitivity. Lord, from this morning, increase my spiritual sensitivity. Lord, from this morning, boost my spiritual alertness by your power. Say, power, boost my spiritual alertness by your power. Say, Lord, from this morning, I want you to boost my spiritual alertness by your power. I want you to help me. I want you to boost my spiritual alertness. Lord, by your power, Lord, by your power, boost this morning my spiritual alertness, boost this morning, increase my spiritual sensitivity, Lord, from this morning, increase, oh God, increase, oh God, that I'll be more sensitive to the things of the Spirit, I'll be more sensitive, Lord, to your word, I'll be more sensitive to the things of God, I will not go cold, I want you to lift up your voice and begin to cry out to God, I want you to cry out to God, to say, boost, oh God, this morning, my spiritual sensitivity, Lord, boost to God, my spiritual alertness from this morning, from this morning, from this morning, I want you to boost my spiritual alertness in the name of Jesus. I want you to go ahead. I want you to go ahead. I want you to go ahead. Instruct me from this morning. Oh Lord, as I release my mind, my will, my motion, I cry out to Lord, my Father, you will instruct me. You will instruct me. You will instruct me in the name of Jesus in every area of my life. I cry out to you this early morning. You will give me counsel. You will instruct my heart. Say, as I submit my heart to you, Lord, you will instruct my heart. You will instruct my heart what to do, when to do it. Oh, Lord, instruct my heart. Instruct my heart. Instruct my heart. Instruct my heart. I want you to go ahead and say, Father, I cry out for help this morning. Help me, your God. Help me, your God. Help me, your God. I want you to go ahead and say, Lord, I cry out for help. I cry out for help. I want you to cry out for help this morning. And remember, they be said in the book of Psalm 119 and verse 147. It said, I rise before dawn and cry for help. But I hope in your word. I want you to pray that scripture this morning. Say, Father, I cry for help this morning. Help me as a mother. Help me as a wife. Help me as a leader. Help me in any capacity that you are this morning. Cry out. I say, Pastor, I need your help. I want you to cry out for help this morning. I want you to cry out for help this morning. Say, Lord, I need your help. I need your help. Help me this morning. I want you to press the help button this morning. Say, Lord, you are my helper. I want you to help me. I want you to help me in my career. Give me extraordinary wisdom to do that which will call me in my assignment. Some of you have assignment. Cry out to God. Say, I need your help. I need your help. I don't know what to do. Some of you, your business, I want you to cry out for help this morning. Say, Lord, help me in my business. Some of you, your children, raising them up. Say, I need help this morning. I need help. Cry out for help this morning. I don't know the area where you need help, but the help I share it this morning, I want you to cry out for help. I want you to cry out for help. Say, help me this morning. Maybe with your assignment. Say, help me this morning. Maybe with your Career. Help me this morning. Let me with your marriage. Say, help me this morning. Every area that you need help, be specific this morning by asking for that help. Maybe it's a financial help. Say, help me this morning. Say, help me this morning. Every area of your life that you need help, I want you to cry out and say, Father, I need your help. I need your help. You are my help. I need your help. Maybe it's got to do with your health. I want you to say, Father, help 
me and instruct me on what to do. Say, help me and instruct me on what to do about that marriage, about that child, about that daughter, about that helper. I want you to cry out. Say, help me, oh God, with my husband. I want you to help me. I cannot help myself with my wife. I want you to help me. I want you to be suspicious as you are praying in your spirit. I want you to pray in your understanding. I want you to cry out for help. It may be you have a bill, and that bill is bigger than you. I want you to cry for help this morning. Say, Lord, I want your help. I cannot do it on my own. I'm depending on you. Maybe you have a troubled son, or you have a troubled daughter. Say, this morning, I bring it before you. I wake up at the turn, and I'm crying to God to help me this morning. I cannot help myself. I cannot help myself. I want you to press on. We're going to be storytelling in that place of help this morning. I want you to help me. I want you to help me. I want you to instruct me. Oh, Lord God, I resolve to you. There is nothing that I can do on my own. I need your help. I need your help to instruct me about ministry, to instruct me about my career, to instruct me about my marriage, to instruct me about that idea I have. I need you, oh God. I don't want to do it on my own. I don't want to do it on my own. I don't want to do it on my own. I want you to cry out to God. I don't want to take laws into my hand. I don't want to do it according to my flesh. I don't want to tell. I don't want to go around the circle. I need you this morning. Instruct me, daddy. Instruct me, daddy. Instruct me, daddy. Instruct me, daddy. From this morning, become oh God, my instructor. I want you to lift up your voice and ask for instruction this morning. Ask for guidance this morning. Say, Lord, I need you to instruct me, to instruct me, to instruct me. I focus my attention. I want you to say that again. 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 I can only say what God is saying this morning. I can only say what God is saying this morning. I want you to say, I need help. Instruct me. I don't know what to do. Instruct me. Some of you at the point, you don't know what to do. You have tried everything and it looks as it's not working. I want you to stay at the place of help this morning because it will instruct you. It will instruct you. It will instruct you what to do, when to do it, how to do it, where to do it. Go ahead this morning. I want you to ask her. Say, help me, O God. And I want to hear it clearly, what you are saying. I want you to instruct me. I want you to help me. I want you to teach me. I want you to guide me. I want you, O God, to cancel me at this time. I don't know what to do. 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 And I don't want to miss it. I want you to help me. I want you to take your anointing oil and open your water. Begin to anoint yourself. Say, instruct my eyes. I want you to put the oil in your face. And begin to say, Father, help me to see what you want me to see. Instruct your ears. Say, help me to hear what you are saying. Instruct, uh, instruct me. I want you to anoint your feet. Let me where you want me to go. Let me where you want me to go. Let me where you want me to go. Let me open my eyes to hear. Open my ears to hear that I will not be frustrated. I want to hear you. I want to hear you. You are the point of decision. Even as I'm, pre I'm preaching this morning, you don't know what to do. I'm here to say to you, the Lord is going to help you. The Lord is going to exalt himself in his life. The Lord is going to consult you, cancel you from this morning by the power of the Lord. I join my faith with you. Wherever you are hearing me again this morning, by the power of the Lord in the name of Jesus, take instruction, take instruction, take instruction, take instruction, take instruction from this morning. You will hear God clearly from this morning. The Lord will guide you from this morning. The Lord will lead you from this morning. The Lord will direct you from this morning. You will hear what God is saying from this morning. My God, we open the book of remembrance for you where it's needed. 
at the top. In the name of Jesus, those who need to help you, they will help you. Those who need to assist you, they will assist you. Those who need to answer your mails, they will answer your mails. In the name of Jesus, those who need to give you one thing or the other that is in their hand, they will return. Oh Lord, what they need to release. In the name of Jesus, those who need to reply, emails that you have sent, questions that you have asked, I pray for you this morning that we answer you. Speak daily. That we answer you. Speak daily. That we answer you. The Spirit, I pray for you from today. My God will help you from this morning. Help will locate you. 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 Those that do not know you, they will help you. They will assist you in the name of Jesus. They will take interest in your matter from today. In the mighty name of Jesus, your children will find help. You yourself, you will find help in your business. You will find help. The Lord will deliver speedily that which concerns you. Thank you, Father. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we worship you. Round about help. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus, where the enemy thought they will put you to shame. The Lord will help you so much that you yourself, it will daze you. I speak that into your life again this morning. Where the enemy thought they will put you to shame. The Lord will so much help you that it will surprise you. Don't put the miracle for you from today. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we worship you. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Before we go again this morning. I want to encourage you tomorrow morning. It's a special program. I want you to invite your friends, to invite your family, invite your loved ones to be part of that program again. It's going to be from the hour of 6 a.m. So don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't join at the end of it. Make sure from the beginning you are part of it because every word that is declared, the Lord is going to use it to bring things up in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, before we go again, out of the substance that the Lord has given to you, I want to believe that you are going to give out of that substance to the Lord again. Remember this Sunday, it's going to be glorious, it's going to be awesome, in grace to grace building, actual and virtual. So I want you to know that by the special grace of God, you are firstborn and you need dedication. By faith, you want to come to the building, I will be there with you to stand in agreement to dedicate your life to the living God. Hallelujah. Don't miss it. Keep your offering before you go. And the God of grace will keep blessing you in the name of Jesus. If you have not registered your interest for this Sunday service, I'm, I'm encouraging you to do that. And God bless you. Throughout this weekend, I want to pray over your life. You will experience help the way you have not experienced it before. You will come back with great testimony. Help us of destiny. They will locate you anywhere in the world, in the bank, anywhere organization that you need them. They will seek for you and they will help you. It shall be well with you. Until I come your way again, I want you to know that Jesus loves you and I love you. Keep enjoying grace and receive help from the east, from the north, from the south. It is well with you. God richly bless you.